Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, you may run into some heavy traffic throughout the city. We'll tell you why. Then a local organization is getting tech savvy for its after school program. Plus, a radio star's daughter makes a stop in Torrance to talk about a serious issue. And students are gearing up for college as hundreds stop by the district's annual college fair. These stories and much more are just seconds ahead. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jen Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Torrance City Council members make a tough decision at this week's meeting. After much debate, City Council unanimously approved a moratorium that was brought back to the table for discussion. Originally, the community development team was asking for a moratorium that was 10 months long, which would protect historic sites in the city since the last moratorium was set to expire at the end of February. However, after much debate, the moratorium was approved by extended, was approved but extended for only 30 days in hopes that this common ground would be fair to residents and the committee. During this time, the Community Development Department will bring back a Planning Commission review process before it expires once again and will draft a small lot overlay. The department urged the City Council to extend the current moratorium to safeguard historic sites in the city from being demolished or fixed. It would also stop the issuing of building permits. However, many residents say the original moratorium would infringe on basic rights of developing their properties. What we're trying to do is get together an ordinance that would somewhat protect the historical significance of the overlay zone and at the same time protect the property rights of the owners. You at the beginning of the year, an urgent ordinance was adopted. Another hot topic at the recent city council meeting took an unexpected turn. South Bay Lexus announced plans to submit a newly redesigned layout of their car dealership expansion project on Crenshaw Boulevard at a later date. In 2005, South Bay Lexus was given the green light to grow their repair facility by adding an actual dealership and expanding their leasehold at the Torrance Airport. The L.A. County Airport Commission considered the recommendation for the use of certain areas of the Zamperini Field at Torrance Airport. The project was later submitted to the L.A. County Airport Land Use Commission, where it was found that the compatibility plan was not consistent with the project. Now, many of the concerns included noise and interference with air navigation. This project is expected to be brought back to the City Council on March 8th. You may have noticed some traffic on your commute to work along Crenshaw Boulevard near Artesia. Several lanes will be closed for asphalt repairs from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. Monday through Friday through early March. Crews will continue working on permanently fixing the road until they reach 182nd Street. This project comes after the Water Department rebuilt a water main located on 182nd Street and Artesia. More than 2,000 feet of water main was fixed during that time. Speaking of driving, more cars hit the road in 2015 than ever before. The government says driving in the U.S. hit an all-time new record with people driving 3.1 trillion miles. Now, to put that into perspective, this many miles is roughly the same distance as 337 round trips from Earth to Pluto. Also, the National Safety Council recently estimated the number of traffic deaths in the United States has increased by 8 percent between 2014 and 2015. And students at Salvation Army's after-school program have a lot more to look forward to thanks to the Salvation Army digital program. The location in Torrance was selected and received 20 new laptops for students to use. The program was piloted during the 2014-2015 school year at 20 Salvation Army after-school centers across the U.S. With grant funding from Target, Salvation Army Torrance was able to purchase and utilize new computers and the EverFi Learning Company, which focuses on bringing cutting-edge digital learning to people, installed two online programs. They are called Vault and Ignition, which cater to each student's level of learning. Vault is a platform that teaches them about understanding money, and Ignition teaches students about digital literacy and responsibility through modules and interactive games. Officials hope students will learn these concepts and apply them to their daily life. The Salvation Army's after-school program is open for enrollment to the public. The new computers will help Salvation Army cater to more children and will now be able to serve up to 75 students. 
A memorial service was held for one of the three people killed in a tragic San Pedro plane crash recently. Torrance City Cable reporter Tao Cha was at the Western Museum of Flight at the Torrance Airport, where family and friends said their final goodbyes. Hundreds of people looked into the distance here at the Western Museum of Flight to remember the life of 72-year-old Mary Falstrom. favorite thing was to go out and look at the beauty by flying around the hill here on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Falstrom was one of three people killed in a mid-air collision over the Pacific Ocean off the coast of San Pedro. A lot of us were very fortunate to be able to fly with her. The memorial service was filled with flowers, handwritten messages, and a moving tribute. Many close to her say that Falstrom died doing what she loved the most. She said that Friday, she said, uh, it's too pretty a day, I got to go flying, and I just said, have fun, and that was it. And she was just another day, she was going to go up again. She was just um, so good to so many people that it's hard to lose the good ones. Falstrom developed an interest in aviation at a young age. She eventually became a stewardess for Northwest Airlines. After leaving the airline industry, she worked for Boeing in Seattle and later Raytheon in Los Angeles. Then Falstrom began volunteering at the Western Museum of Flight in Torrance. And I remember her, you know, getting in her golf cart and riding up and down the hangar rows and visiting with us. You know, we'd get back from a flight. So where'd you guys go? How was it? You know, where are you going off to next time? But she was always just a joy and, and very sweet and She'll, she'll be missed. We would both have our dogs out there and take our dogs walking together and just, just talk, you know, just talk about what was going on. And she was just so sweet and, and just loving and just a nice person to be around. Mary Foster's passion for flying has now led a scholarship to be created in her honor to encourage other women to get back into flying. Women who have um, lost their currency and gotten a little rusty can apply for the scholarship and get back into flying again. So we've done that in Mary's name. In her later years, Falstrom also served as a member of the 99s, an international organization of women pilots, and the Duomo Flyers, a local flying club. She was a very, very, very wonderful aviation enthusiast. I hope she's saving me a good seat up there at a big hangar in the sky. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Tao Ta. Thanks, Tao. Mary is survived by her husband, Richard, son, Chris, and her brother, Jerry. Well, still ahead, five special needs athletes in Torrance are inducted into the Hall of Fame. Plus, the Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce hosts its sold-out Black History Month event. We'll take you there. Students got ahead of the game to prepare for their educational future. Nearly 800 students packed North High School's gym recently. It was the annual Torrance Unified School District College Fair. In its 35th year, students were given the opportunity to speak with representatives from over 90 schools sponsored by the Torrance Council of PTAs, Torrance Unified School District, and the PTAs at North, South, and West, and Torrance High Schools. is a long-standing tradition in helping students navigate their way to higher education. Representatives from colleges, universities, trade schools, and military academies were there to answer questions and offer tools to prospective students. They had the chance to speak with school representatives one-on-one. -on -one. Every year, you know, it gets competitive, gets more and more competitive. The, you know, the requirements change, um, students' mindsets have changed, you know, what they really want in life, and I think it's important for the colleges to see that as well as the students. It's really nice. I get to uh, see other colleges and experience what it feels like and explore and uh, have my options open. In addition to the meetings, there were 18 different workshops held on topics such as SAT prep and how to write college applications. Carrie Kasem spoke to members of the Delamo Rotary Club recently about her father, Casey Kasem, and her work to help stop elder abuse through her foundation, Kasem Cares. Avija Scarborough tells us more. My name's Casey Kasem, reminding you to keep your feet in the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Casey Kasem was known as an iconic DJ and radio personality, but it was his struggles during the end of his life that sparked a national conversation about elder abuse. As Kasem suffered with Lewy body dementia, he was caught in a bitter family feud between his three kids with his first wife and his second wife, Jean Kasem. Shame on these children. Shame. He was taken out of the facility that his wife put him in. Un, un, his feeding tube was unhooked, his IVs were unhooked. He was completely taken out of basically an incubator, put in an SUV and driven around to three or four different states, hiding him. 
It was Jean Kasem's behavior that ultimately helped carry win conservatorship over her father after a grueling court battle. When the judge announced that, I think it was Judge Murphy, announced that I had won conservatorship, I broke down crying. My sister, my mom, my dad's family, my, the friends that were in the courtroom, we all started crying. But the battle didn't end there. She received thousands of letters from people in similar situations who weren't allowed to see their ailing parents. It happens more than you think. It's an epidemic. People don't have the money to fight it, and there are no laws that protect them, so you don't hear about it. That's what the foundation does. Her foundation, Kasem Cares, was created in 2013 to bring awareness to elder abuse and to help pass the Kasem Cares visitation bill drafted by her attorney, Troy Martin. Carrie believes her father's death in 2014 was caused in part by her stepmom isolating him from family and wants to help prevent this from happening to others. Isolation is elder abuse. It kills. You leave somebody, especially someone with dementia, in a facility that they don't know with people that they are they don't know you will die 50 percent faster so if we get the visitation bill the case and cares visitation bill in all 50 states you're going to see a lot of neglect and abuse stop one of the things that carrie emphasized tonight in order to prevent being in a situation like hers is to get your loved one on camera discussing what their plans are for their estate when they pass and to also mention that they would like their children to be able to visit them prevention is what is going to stop this. These were valuable lessons for the Rotary members, many of them seniors themselves, as well as advocates for senior rights. Carrie has been speaking at various Rotary clubs and says they consist of the most active citizens of the community and hopes they will help in the fight against elder abuse. Elder care is, is very important and I thought it would be a wonderful thing to bring to Rotary to expose everybody to. Casey Kasem made a career from his voice, and now his daughter is keeping his legacy alive by lending her voice to those who can't speak up for themselves. He would be so proud of me. I know. And I know he's watching over me, and I feel him around me all the time. And quoting her dad's famous words, Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. For Torrance City Cable, I'm Avija Scarborough. Thanks, Avija. Torrance Special Needs athletes and coaches were honored at the Toyota Automobile Museum for their hard work at an annual dinner recently. One by one, athletes and coaches were given gold medals at the 20th Annual Special Needs Sports Kickoff Dinner, a celebration for everyone involved in special needs sports and a way to say thank you for all the time invested in making these programs possible. As a surprise, five of the athletes were inducted into the Hall of Fame, Eric Bug, Tom O'Brien, Michael Streeter, Stephen Wolfram, and Christy Sylvia received a special plaque for their years of participation. Athlete Sylvia, who has been part of the special needs program for 14 years, says it was a great moment. Become very independent, learning how to work as a team. Many other participating athletes say the program helps them build lasting friendships. One of the highlights of the night was the special Richard and Mary Ann Fick Lifetime Volunteer Award, which was given to Steve Cooper, who over the years has moved up from assistant aquatics coach to head coach. He devotes 42 weeks of the year to training athletes. I'm terribly flattered. Um, you know, with all the things that I've done in the early years of my life, this kind of thing is probably the thing that is the most important to me. Friends of Torrance Exceptional Athletes were also at the event. They are an organization that helps fundraise for sports programs for persons with intellectual disabilities who live in Torrance. As Black History Month comes to an end, many famous black historic figures fill the Torrance Marriott in celebration. The city of Torrance participated in the 19th annual Black History Month celebration. The Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce and the Greater Los Angeles African American Chamber of Commerce hosted an event celebrating remarkable figures in the black community who have made a positive lasting impact. The theme this year was breaking barriers, paving the way to a brighter future. It highlighted the ways in which this year's honorees have challenged the status quo to create positive pathways to change and are making a difference in the future generations. And honorees included former NFL football player Sam Cunningham, Ro Rose, Ro Rose Royce, and Kim Turner, the transit director from the city of Torrance. 
For the youth attendees, it was an event they are excited to be part of. I love having Black History Month because it recognizes my culture, and I feel like we're not recognized oftenly, and I feel like this is like a month where I'm proud to be black and everything. It shows how, how much we appreciate all the hard work and efforts that have been done by our African American leaders. This year's vendor walkway was expanded. It was enhanced with booths with the Buffalo Soldiers, Torrance Historical Society booth, and information on genealogy, giving attendees a chance to walk through history. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a police officer? Well, you now have the chance to find out. The Torrance Police Department is accepting applications for its Partners in Policing class, which will start in March. The program is open to all Torrance residents and anyone in affiliation with the city of Torrance. It is a community awareness program that allows people to walk in the shoes of an officer. Participants will experience hands-on exercises. They will meet officers from a range of departments, including gang detail, crime scene investigation, and SWAT, to name a few. So far, 35 classes have graduated. By this time, participants will go through 10 to 13 sessions involving everything from the police academy to the prosecution of criminals. They offer two sessions per year and spots fill up quickly. To sign up, go to the city's website at torrentca.gov TPD. Then check on community affairs. The Partners in Policing program can be found under Citizens Academies. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention say there are 14 new cases on the radar for the Zika virus and they're not being spread through mosquitoes. The cases specifically involved focus on the Zika virus through sexual transmission. This shows that sexual transmission may be more of a risk than previously thought. Two of the cases are in women whose only known risk were sexual contacts with a male partner exhibiting symptoms of the virus. And the Torrance Fire Department is spreading public awareness about the Zika virus as well. They released this bulletin to help answer many questions one may have about the virus that has been linked to birth defects. Many symptoms to look out for are fever, rash, pain in the joints, red eyes, and headaches. Torrance fire officials say if you are concerned, you can get a blood test done to see if you have it. While the Zika virus has no treatment, there are steps you can take to relieve the symptoms. You should rest and drink plenty of fluids. Take Tylenol to relieve fever or headaches. It's not recommended to take aspirin or painkillers such as ibuprofen and even Aleve. Since Zika is primarily spread through mosquito bites, the best way to prevent it is to stay inside when these mosquitoes are more active during the day, early morning, and few hours before sunset. Also wearing bug spray or cream that has DEET in it will keep the mosquitoes away. Doctors have also confirmed that Zika can be transferred through a blood transfusion. Build-A-Bear Workshop is releasing some of the newest superhero teddy bears with some new costumes. A brand new Superman and Batman bear will be up for sale online or to bring to life in stores. Right now, Build-A-Bear only has Batman with its classic costume available, but you can now get your hands on more costumes for those, these superheroes to make this experience so much better. You can even pick up a bear-sized Batmobile for your new fuzzy friends. Store officials say the new costumes are similar to the ones we can see in the recent movies. They also have two Wonder Woman costumes in store now. There is uh, one Build-A-Bear located in the Delamo Fashion Center. And another local company has some news to brag about. A Torrance sales and marketing company received the Campaign Cup Award, which is given to top performing businesses based on sales quality and performance for overall excellence in 2015. This is the second time they have received this award. The company's name is SoCal Group, and they are the leader in introducing outsourcing sales and acquisition by helping Fortune 500 and 100 clients with business growth. The company is involved in many projects that give back to the community with organizations like Operation Smile and the Boys and Girls Club of Venice. The Japanese car brand Honda is paving the way for a greener future. Honda's CEO announced that by the year 2030, two of the three Honda cars will be either hybrid, plug-in, hybrid, battery electric car, or hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Right now, only 5% of Honda sales are electrical vehicles, but... 
By 2030, Honda officials say hybrids and plug-in hybrids will make up about half of Honda sales, and EVs would account for about 15%. In 2017, the Honda Accord hybrid sedan will be exported from Japan to North America starting in 2016. It will be an upgraded version of 2015's two-motor system. Toyota also says by 2050, they plan to have their lineup electrified. Well, still ahead, we have some exciting events you won't want to miss. And the one and only Colin Kushner has a sneak peek into his next show. Here are some current events. Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce is hosting a social day for business owners at the Western Museum of Flight at Torrance Airport. Reservations are only available for the first 50 chamber members. The event begins at 4.30 p.m. and tickets are on sale for $20. And you can meet and learn from artists from the Los Angeles County Museum of Art who will visit the Katie Geisert Library on March 5th. They will lead a workshop for free, but the space is limited to the first 25 participants. You can contact the Youth Services Department at 310-618-5964 for more information. This week we have a special story of perseverance of a whole community, all for the love of baseball. Here's Mr. Boomsauce Colin Kushner with the story. For years, Riviera Little League has been a mainstay in the city of Torrance. And for the first time ever, the league that has been around for over 50 years can host night games. A couple years ago, we had over 600 kids in our league, and we had spillover games over at South High on the girls' softball field. And each year, we went from one game per team to six games you're playing at South High. To accommodate the hundreds of kids, league president Brent Hannon and fellow board member Mark Enuma went to the city of Torrance in hopes of finding a solution. It was either a brand new field or lights. Myself and Mark Enuma, a fellow board member, went to the city and basically said, hey, we need a third field or we need lights. And they said, you want to get a third field, you you, you have better chance getting lights. We said, what do we got to do to get the lights? And basically it was go door to door to 30 neighbors and get 100% approval for them to sign off. Myself, Mark and Numa, and our two boys went door to door. Uh, basically begged and pleaded and said, hey, sign off, it's for the kids. Once they tackled that obstacle, it was now on to fundraising solely for the purpose of making the lights project a reality. At Sheriff Lake, we'd like to reward another check for $1,000 to live here literally along with a whole bunch of uh, equipment that we And the response has been huge. You know, it has just for the fact that the games will all be played here. I think that was the biggest thing because even though South was very nice to us by allowing us to play games there, it's very windy there. It's all dirt infield. There's no bathrooms. So for the parents just to be able to have their kids play at these locations, huge support by the parents. One, a two, a three, let there be. 28 years ago, the Chicago Cubs played their first night game in history at Wrigley Field. And just like the Cubs, for the first time ever, Riviera Little League can do the same. Thanks, Colin. The Riviera Little League's T-Ball is still accepting players. And if you'd like to volunteer or be a sponsor, you can go to eteamz.com slash Riviera LL. Well, that does it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. And I'm Jen Chun. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.